In the last video, I discussed methods of reverse engineering by pulling geometry from this OBJ file. But I left you hanging on the harder sections. And because so many requests, I decided to come back and fill in the gaps here. Specifically, how to close the nose of this model effectively, and also how to make the canopy structure. Also, how to create a smooth transition between the canopy and the fuselage. So, let's begin. To start, there's a little known button that you can actually push to make this quite easy and it's not readily available. And let's see if I can find this. Oh, oh yeah, okay, it's right here. Let's see. Yeah, kapow! So, here you have it, folks. It was that easy. Or was it? No, I don't guess you have that button, and I don't either. So we're going to have to go about this the hard way. Buckle up. Let's get going. Some things I'd like to talk about before we get going. This is a very beautiful model, but it was also designed to be fairly small scale. When I get into this canopy, which we'll be working on, I start to see some little areas I question. Specifically, the complexity around this front face here. That just doesn't look quite right to me. And in fact, you can kind of see where it just obviously this isn't the way the real plane could have been built. For the scale we want this at, I think we can do a little bit better job around the front of this area. We'll work on that. The other thing I want to talk about is the whole purpose of using forms to begin with. The workflow for forms is such that you use a form to easily edit and manipulate it. Then once you're happy with the results of your form, simply finish editing it, if recording history, or convert it if not. Actually, I think that's the better way because it gives you more control for the next step. What you're left with at that point is either going to be a solid body or if it's an open form, it will simply be a surface. So this tool has a lot of really strong positives, but it can be, as you're probably aware if you're watching this video, frustrating at times. You need to think about what the end result is that you're trying to achieve. It's not going to stay a form. You're going to want to use some elements of the form tool that are very quick and very easy, but I hear a lot of people commenting, how am I going to get these tight little parts? How am I going to transition from my wing to my fuselage? Certainly it can be done. Some of you gurus are likely far better at it than me, but at some point you're burning more time and horsepower working with forms than you would be by traditional means. So why not take the tool as far as its strengths allow? And then from there, move on to other methods of editing. That's my workflow for this. And that's what I'll be showing. If we come over here to create, and I click here to create a quad ball, you'll see the similarities. Sometimes, when you're stuck, go back and take a look at primitive geometry to remind yourself what works. And this is how I created a smooth nose without sharp edges. You'll notice in the quad ball that these lines don't converge down to a point. I'm calling them lines because that's how I think about it, but what they really are called are loops and rings to people that want specifics. So what I chose to do here, literally I tried to recreate this shape. And it didn't work out so well at first. So then I thought, okay, I've had enough. I'll just steal the front of a quad ball. All right, so now now the question is simply to get it to the scale and shape that I want for this model. And so with a little bit of editing and scaling, I was able to do that. And it simply becomes a matter of tying it in to the existing geometry. So here you see me scaling this in both directions and bringing this in and getting it close. And that's how I did the nose. What you see me using here is the Edit by Curve tool. This is one of my favorite tools for making sure my geometry is just absolutely dead smooth the way I want. What you're also seeing me use here is under the edit form options, the soft modification. I checked that and on extents, I'm using face count and normally I use a face count of only two or three. So I'm happy with that now and I'm going to go on and run some of these faces back along the fuselage not going to finish it. Uh, I just wanted to do it for this demonstration. We'll just get it around to the back of the canopy so that I can uh, design a canopy and show how I would 
uh, attach these two components together. So you're going to see me merge these two together so that the symmetry is maintained on both sides. Some final little tweaking here, going to shape it around the canopy. And then um, we'll get started on the fun part. So I'm going to start off here under the form tab using the face tool. And uh, the options here, I'm going to start out using sim the simple mode and object snap. And then from there, I will flip over to edge mode with also object snap. And I will continue this thing up until I can have a full arc. And then I will use my symmetry to put it over to the other side. Now you simply see me using the Modify tool, and I'm clicking the Alt button to add an edge each time, and I'm simply roughing this canopy out all the way down in Profile View, and then going back and tweaking and adjusting a little bit as needed. And then I flip to the top, and I start using the Scale Gizmo here to bring the canopy in on the sides. Still, just trying to rough this shape out before we get it refined a little bit further. Also, I'm double-clicking on the bands or the rings, and I'm using my pull command as well to get it to shape to the, um, uh, the shape of the model as closely as possible. Now what you see me doing is I'm using the gizmo tool again in profile view and scale mode, but I'm changing the location uh by to the top so that everything will stay in my original location at the very top but by using the scale value there I can get this canopy really closely to the uh, intended shape so I'll keep doing this keep tweaking and then I'll go back to the top view and adjust it even further. Think progressive refinement here. And again, now I'm on those rings. I was using the pull command to get them a little, little bit closer. And now I have gone back to the move tool with soft modification selected. I can see that there's some uneven facets underneath this model and I would want a canopy that actually is uh, optically clear here so I'm I am going to use it as a guide but I'm not going to follow it 100% because um, I think we can do a little bit better job now I'm back to using the edit by curve tool which makes it absolutely dead perfect now that I'm happy with the back, I'm going to start extending edges towards the front. You'll notice I just creased the ring at the, uh, the canopy transition, and then I proceed to add edges going all the way down and forward. And using the same tools that I did previously, I'm going to tweak and push and pull these. And I'm going to swip, switch to the top view, and I'm going to scale these in, each of these until I like the general form of what I've got in the front. Then again, it'll be a matter of progressive refinement as we push these to get it to match the original geometry as much as possible. Now, I did have some problems. In fact, I had considerable problems on the front of this model around uh, these window frames, getting uh, the glass to actually be smooth. So I uh, had to spend some time on that tweaking but in the end we were able to get it what I'm starting on here is I'm using the face tool again and this time I'm going to create a loop um, all the way around the bottom of this canopy and we're not going to tie it in at least we're going to try not to I accidentally snagged it there but I'm going to end up deleting that and I will create a separate loop all the way around and then again I'll give it symmetry 
so that we can have it loop on both sides. Now it's not connected yet, and I won't connect the forms together. I'm going to change tactics here a little bit, and I'm going to convert this over to a face. And I just converted the canopy to a face, but notice in this conversion, I'm selecting exactly the lines that I want to keep when I do the conversion. That's really important. See, now that it's converted, you see those are actually splits and divisions in, in the face. And ultimately, what I'm going to create is a loft. So I'm drawing a spline curve. I just extruded that spline. And now I'm literally trimming everything that exists below that canopy. There was a little spot that I needed to extend below. So then you'll see me go back and I'll trim that away. And now here we have the frame back. I'm actually not going to use this frame. I'm going to use the lower edge of this frame. And I'm going to loft from the lower edge of the frame to the actual edge of the canopy. So you'll see me selecting the pieces all the way around. And there we go. So there it is, all joined together. But I'm immediately then going to explode it because what I want to do is join only the glass panels together separate from the frame panels. So I'm splitting these up. And reason being is once I've done that, I can use the offset tool here. And I'm going to slow it down so you can see what I'm doing. This is how I create the division between the frame and the glass. It's very important. Then the new space that I've created between the frame and the glass, I simply use the loft tool. So why did I do it this way instead of try to create all this with forms? Well, this is just my personal preference, but I find detail work like this to be far more accurate uh, in using surface modeling or sometimes even solid modeling, depending on how you're doing it than having to fight with uh, forms on something as small, tiny, and precise as this. The end result of this is crisp and absolutely uh, exactly what I wanted. Okay, we're down to the last part here. This is the front windshield frames, and this probably gave me more trouble than anything else because there's not a straight bit anywhere on this. This glass twists and turns. So what I'm doing is I'm using the face tool, running around the center rim of, uh, of this frame. And there's each of the loops on the outside will ultimately be creased. There. Now we got a full ring and We'll fix this one side here. I'm actually using the curve tool here just to reinforce exactly the curvature that I want. And now what you see me doing is taking these loops and modifying them with the Alt command so that I can take a new loop to the inside. So then we'll push these around to get the profile shape exactly the way I want. Okay, now I'm gonna do the one to the outside edge, simple enough, using the scale value and the Alt tab to bring that out. I am going to mirror this. Well, what I'm doing first is you see me uh, dropping these back a little bit so that there's a chamfered profile on the on both outer rings and getting them exactly where I want them. And then I'm going to crease the two loops on the inside so that there's a hard edge. So I like how that looks. Now we're going to mirror it to the other side uh, by using the symmetry command. And 
and I'm merging the edges here in the middle and we have this one final piece to fill in. There we go, looking good. I'm okay with that. And then, now that the rings are done, I am going to use the Move tool again, add a new edge, again use the Crease tool, and bring that down on both the inside and outside edges. So I'm going to turn my shape. First I converted it to a face. Then I actually put a back on it and close it all up so I create a solid Okay, now I want to show you guys just a quick hack here. We had created this front piece and extruded it down so that the frame was a solid. I also put a solid flat panel of glass in here because I noticed that other models didn't show them as curved. And then we had the rest of this done as a surface model. Well, I want to join these together and I don't want to have to fight with... Uh, making sure that these edges matched up perfectly. Uh, the quickest way for me to do this is to convert both of these to a solid and join them together so that all of that interfering geometry just magically disappears. So what I did was I create a loft at the bottom, here and here, and then I joined these together. So I had two solids. Then I simply joined the frame and the windshields to the canopy as well. And then when I am done with that and I like it, I can come back here then and delete the bottom edge of this. And when I do that, all of the interior geometry of the two components is just watertight. Actually, it's perfect. And that's the way I want this for me to continue on to the next part of this, which is attaching it to the fuselage. So let's connect this all together now. I'm going to use a, a trick that we used just earlier, and I'm going to create a spline just below the canopy depth. Spline this time, Rob. We're going to go back to spline, and we're going to give ourselves some space from the existing canopy, but we're going to kind of mirror the, the shape of it all the way around. Now I'll draw a random line over the top so you'll see that um, profile enclose. Now under the solid tools, I'm going to extrude it out. And then because I'm being lazy, immediately extrude it back through to cut that. Use a solid tool to cut that surface. So now I'm going to split the model. And we're only going to work with one side of it. And we're going to do the loft trick again. So I will loft the edges of uh, the fuselage all the way back. And then I will edit the loft edge of the canopy all the way back. Now the difference is, is the first line I selected, I used a tangency curve. The second line, I actually want to be a hard crease. And that's it. That's how I would have connected these two together and you've got exactly the connection points I wanted. So all that's left now is to do a little bit of materials work, put a glass surface on the canopy, mirror it over to the other side, and uh, I'm gonna change my view a little bit, and that's the final deal. Thanks for watching. If you've watched all the way through, it's amazing of you. This was a longer video than I anticipated. I'm anxious to get back to the F-16 jet, so, Please like and subscribe and stay tuned.